So today you're joining me on an epic journey lasting just over 27 hours courtesy of Turkish Airlines Business Class. Our journey starts in Dublin from where we'll be flying for around 4 hours to Istanbul. Then we have a 9 hour stopover in Istanbul Airport before flying another 14 hours to our destination in Mexico City. This should give us plenty of time to see if Turkish really is the best airline in Europe. But now it's time to leave our hotel in Dublin and make our way to the airport on a very chilly morning. We checked into our flight which was super easy and quick and headed straight for the business lounge. The lounge in Dublin is fairly compact but there's a nice selection of pastries, fruit, cereals, muffins and juices. Over in the corner there is also overnight oats, cheeses and yogurts and an area for tea and coffee. On the other side is a work area with some useful world clocks and the internet speed here was really good if you do need to get some work done. We didn't have long to wait before our flight was called so we made our way to the gate to see our aircraft arriving. Today we're flying on the Airbus A321neo and in business class you get a generous seat width of 21 inches and a legroom of around 45 inches, so plenty of space to relax. However there isn't too much recline and there's no flat bed option on this part of the trip. As soon as everyone was in their seats we were offered a welcome drink before takeoff and I chose a raspberry juice which was really delicious. You do have to drink this pretty quick however as it's only a couple of minutes before they start to clear them away and we're ready for takeoff. Seat controls are pretty basic on this flight with a simple mechanical recline, leg rest and foot rest buttons. You also get a pair of standard but good quality non noise cancelling headphones. There was also good onboard Wi-Fi with 1GB included and unlimited messaging for business class customers. There's a pretty extensive menu offered and as it's still morning we're on the breakfast menu. On the back is also the drinks menu offering Turkish wines and an unnamed champagne as well as spirits, teas and coffees. Entertainment wise we have a 13 inch seat back touchscreen which also has an in seat controller uh, which can work independently of the screen so you can watch the map whilst you're watching a movie which is also quite cool. For breakfast I had the fruit salad, walnut bowl and some delicious warm bread. It also came with the super cute salt and pepper shakers which I may have stolen. I also had some champagne and some fresh orange juice because why not? After breakfast we were given some roast hazelnuts which were a nice little snack for the movie and I also had a nice cup of green tea to go with it. We arrived in Istanbul at around 6.30 local time after a better than expected and a very pleasant flight. Arriving into Istanbul airport is a real overload for the senses as the place is absolutely vast. It's so vast in fact that the staff either use buggies or these crazy electric scooters to get around everywhere so you do need to keep your wits about you and make sure you don't stray into the buggy lanes as that gets them really angry. After about a 15 minute walk from the gate we eventually found our way to the Turkish business lounge which was also vast. It can be a little tricky to find in all the chaos of the airport, but it is well signed. There are loads of counters where fresh food is being made on a constant basis. And there are also plenty of delicious looking cakes, baklava, a vast salad center and even more cakes. We started with some delicious freshly made pasta There's tons to do in the lounge and this was supposed to track flights on the globe which looked kind of cool but it didn't seem to be working when we tried. There's also a museum in the lounge and when we were there it was displaying lots of football memorabilia which is interesting if you're into that sort of thing. So 
So because we have a long layover, we've got about nine hours here at Istanbul Airport, um, we've managed to check ourselves in to one of these little suites, which are amazing. Get a little bed, as you can see, um, a little table there, and it's, yeah, it's basically like a hotel room, and it just makes the stay here uh, very enjoyable, which is really good. One of the things that's kind of strange here is that behind this window is the rest of the airport. So if I open this, you can basically see uh, you've got the whole of the lounge and loads of people. Sorry, not the lounge, the, the sort of airport concourse. So um, yeah, it's kind of a bit weird. You just have to remind yourself that you're actually, it's not uh, a hotel room and that's not the outside. Uh, so you need to have all of your clothes on. So one of the other very cool things about having one of the suites here in Istanbul is that you get access to this amazing bathroom and shower room. Uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to jumping in there and freshening up for our next flight. Time went pretty quickly after we'd eaten, slept and showered and it was already time to make our way to our gate which is about a 15 to 20 minute walk away which could potentially catch you out so you do have to allow for that. Our Boeing 7879 Dreamliner was already waiting for us and we went straight through without waiting. The business class section is fitted out with 30 nicely designed individual pods with lie flat seats. Already waiting for me were some comfortable slippers. and some Denon noise cancelling headphones. In the seat we have a mini mirror and adjustable reading lights as well as all the seat controls which are on the other side. Our menu on this flight was even more extensive than the last and there was a really big wine list which included Tattinger Champagne and some really nice red wines uh, which I personally went for the 2019 Crianza which I ended up having quite a few glasses of which was delicious. You even have a chef to take your order for you. Again, Wi-Fi was offered on board and was a surprisingly decent speed. You also have the option to look at a forward-facing camera on the aircraft, which is also fun, especially when taking off and landing. And after another quick welcome drink, it was time to take off and make our way on the 14-hour journey to Mexico City. I do really like the ambient lighting in the 787 uh, which made the cabin super relaxing on our nighttime flight. My movie choice this evening was No Hard Feelings uh, which was quite enjoyable. Before long however my hot towel drink selection cutlery and this very cute LED candle were delivered but given that it was around 4am local time I wasn't really in the mood for a large meal so instead I settled in and tried to get some sleep. I actually managed to sleep pretty well and I was awoken by a lovely sunrise shining through the window and the sound of breakfast being eaten all around me. Before I had a chance to wake up properly my breakfast was already on its way including a delicious Turkish coffee which I highly recommend. Now it's morning we can have a little bit of a better look at the cabin and the seat pod. On the way into Mexico City we were treated to some amazing views of mountains and the volcano and of course the vast city itself.
for switching again to the slightly delayed front camera for landing. So, what was the whole experience like? Well, in all honesty, it was extremely pleasant. And if you told me to do it again straight away, I'd have been more than happy to do so. It really didn't feel like it was 27 hours long at all. Standout points were the amazing staff on both flights who were super attentive and kept topping up my drinks, possibly once or twice too many, but it's all good. Another thing which was amazing was the business class lounge in Istanbul and the suite that we managed to get with the long layover. Uh, that was a lifesaver. Um, really nice to have a bed and a TV and to be able to take a shower. Makes the time, if you've got a long stopover, go much more quickly. Overall, totally recommended and I really can't wait to do it again.